Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and more big name CEOs are being forced and pushed into a corner to acknowledge the current trends of the housing market. But do these companies and these real estate CEOs, are they giving information to the public that is too overly optimistic or are they giving information to the public that is cautious? Now, here's the thing, y'all. In a perfect world, as Americans, we would be able to lean on these data provider and forecasting real estate companies like Redfin, Zillow, CoreLogic. We would be able to lean on them to give us guidance and to give us correct Correct forecasting so that as consumers, we better understand the direction of the housing market. Now, the problem, y'all, is we are just not seeing that right now. In fact, the only trends that we're seeing right now from these big name companies is that they are wrong and that they are overly optimistic. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Redfin CEO once again on a Yahoo video. So we're going to watch a video. We're going to analyze what he's saying. I just dropped a video from the same guy, the same CEO from Redfin. Tell me what you think of his current expressions. He, in my opinion, looks a lot more defeated than the last video, but you guys tell me. But before I do, remember you guys, I'm not your financial advisor. My bio is as realtor, loan officer, instructor. I'm a renter. I own a home. I'm looking for my primary residence. Okay. I'm a whole bunch of stuff in real estate, but this is my personal YouTube channel. I'm working really hard. So for my efforts, you guys, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and please comment below. Every once in a while, when I, when I can't respond to comments, I'll go in when I have a free time and I'll look at some of those comments. Oh, you guys uplift me so much. And to everyone that comments that I haven't responded to, you're welcome. I will keep going and I really appreciate you guys. Okay. The reason why I'm doing these videos as well is for you. So thank you. Let's get started on this video right now. The market has had a volatile year to say the least. Now, as houses sit unsold on a cooling market, there may be early signs that people are willing to start buying again. For more on this, we're joined by Redfin CEO, Glenn Kelman. Glenn, great to have you here with us and thanks for taking the time here. First and foremost, I mean, the company had just reported earnings as well. Give us a glimpse into where the market share and the anticipation to out, really right? build out the number of listings that Redfin has, where you've been moving that forward as of right now, it sits at about eight tenths of a percent of U.S. existing home sales units uh, in the second quarter of 2022. Well, that just means we have more room to grow, doesn't it? So market share gains accelerated in the second quarter. It's probably one reason that Redfin traded up. We obviously want to keep taking share. That was highlighted by strength in our listings business. We list homes for one percent we sell them for more money the advertising campaign behind that has been really successful so it's been a tough market but redfin keeps taking share and we keep serving customers well so i think we'll be fine so that's the ceo of redfin actually saying that he can't wait to start buying up a whole bunch of houses again OK, so this is him in kind of bragging a little bit about being an institutional investor. I wonder if they're going to decide to manipulate the housing market again. Right. If you're wondering what I mean, let me give you an example. A big company like this that owns multiple properties, they can sell a home to themselves for an overval for overvalue. And guess what that creates? A comp or a comparable sell comparables are comparable sales are used to generally come up with fair market value from appraisals. So I hope they don't decide to manipulate the market. But again, you guys, all of this COVID stuff, like to me, all of these, all of this stuff that's happening because of COVID is actually a look into the future. All of these guys and companies, trust me when I tell you, they can't wait to take our homes. So just remember that when you're setting your goals. Let's get back to the video. Of course, on the other hand, the pie is getting smaller, right, Glenn? Uh, even if you're taking a larger slice of it. Um, something else you guys talked about this morning is that the number of homes in July that sat on the market for at least 30 days without going under contract was up 12 and percent. And we were talking earlier about the really rapid change that we have seen in demand for a number of different products from retailers to semiconductor makers. And that seems to be happening in the housing market as well. Um, can you talk us through sort of the pace of the slowdown that we are seeing right now? Well, it was really dramatic in May and June. I think it was underreported in the press. Housing used to be a very stable asset class, and now it's extremely volatile. And one reason for that is that it used to be that institutions accounted for about a quarter of the sales. 
but now it's about a third. You have more builder activity, you have I buyers, you have real estate investment trusts, all active in the single family home market, and they react much more quickly to changing economic conditions. If you've lived in a house for 30 years and raised your kids there, there's no way you're gonna mark it down after two weeks on the market, but an I buyer is gonna price ahead of the market and mark it down every week until it sells. And so that just makes the market more like the stock market, more volatile, more up and down. Over the past few weeks in July, it's been coming back up because interest rates finally got below 5% again. That is astonishing to me. So 33% of sales, okay, I'm not saying inventory, I'm not saying demand, but 33% of sales comes from investors, like iBuyers, builders, real estate trusts like that. That is, to me personally, that is super fascinating. But again, another sign as Americans, as potential homeowners, that we have so many things, listen to me, we have so many things stacked against us, but none as devastating or damaging as ourselves, okay? So we make it worse for ourselves than things need to be. So remember that, all right? You need to be your biggest cheerleader. And I hope that everyone that watches this, love yourself, right? Be optimistic about your goals. Be excited. Be passionate about it. Because again, look at all these things we have stacked against us. You better not have yourself stacked against you. It is what it is. Let me get back to this video right now. Glenn, what proportion of the market is accounted for by those folks you're talking about who are investors or hedge funds or private equity or what have you versus traditional home buyers? Well, now it's about a third of institutions accounting for sales, but that includes builders too. Builders are very aggressive about selling their homes when they see inventory piling up. In a markdown kind of period, what would that mean for the listing fees, that revenue uh, that you rely on ultimately for your business at Redfin as well? Well, as you said, we get a smaller piece, or excuse me, a larger piece of a smaller pie. So we just have to fight harder to grow our business. We tried to train investors on market share gains because you get too much credit in a booming market for small share gains because you're just taking a small piece of a big pie and you don't get enough credit in a down market when you're taking more share, but the pie itself is shrinking. And so the only way for me to stay sane is to really focus on share. So I hope you're really, really listening to what he's saying. Now, again, this is just my opinion, okay? To me, what he's saying is, I'm going to get out and I'm going to buy houses and I'm going to take them from you just as soon as possible. The pie is a lot smaller, but my stake in that pie is going to be a lot bigger, right? Isn't that what he just said? Now, again, you guys, hopefully they don't manipulate the market again. It's not like they're greedy or motivated by money or anything, right? Isn't this dangerous? Isn't this scary? These are household names. COVID was an insight into the future of America. I'm telling you guys that. So now that all of these people have been exposed, I wonder how long it's going to take for everyone to forget about it, right? But I'm not going to forget, and I hope you don't forget. But let's get back to the video right now. Glenn, do you see a lot of price uh, reductions starting to happen on the part of sellers? Yes, especially in the pandemic market. So if you look at Boise, Salt Lake, Denver, more than half the listings in June were marked down, which is a record. I think in Salt Lake City, it was 62.5%, which is just crazy. So there were so many people who were pricing ahead of the market, looking at what happened last month and thinking it will happen next month. And they were just caught straddling a real correction in the market. It has been hard to have a reckoning with these folks. They think about what happened in October last year, what they saw their neighbor get in February of this year, and they still want that and they can't get it. All right. So what he's talking about is the fear of missing out that's starting to spread into the seller's market, despite CPI only being 8.5%. Okay. And if you guys don't know why I'm saying that, I'm saying that because um, being that CPI came in at 8.5%, a lot of people expected higher. So it is under projections and it appears that we have peaked inflation. So a lot of people are being overly optimistic, trying to jump on into the market. In fact, the stock market also rallied as a result. I'm saying that maybe th that data may be tainted because of midterm elections. I don't know that for sure, but regardless, you guys, the fear of missing out is going to spread even more into the seller's market. Now let's finish out this video right now. Um, can you help put this uh, expected housing slowdown in perspective given the last housing slowdown that we had during the great financial crisis, which I imagine was a lot more severe than what, what you anticipate we're gonna see this time around? 
It is. I mean, there were so many forced sales in 2008 because people were upside down on their mortgage. Right now, the people who bought homes have great credit scores. They have incredible amount of equity, trillions of dollars of equity. So they aren't going to be the forced sellers. The only forced seller are the ones that we already talked about. These are the folks like iBuyers, REITs, builders, they are going to liquidate their inventory much faster. And they're the ones causing a correction more than anything. I mean, everyone is sort of spooked by the economy, but buyers seem to be coming back. So I just don't see the structural elements in place to cause a complete meltdown in the US economy the way that we had in 2008. It's not even close. So he isn't wrong. In 2008, we had a lot, we had a lot more inventory. We had a lot more foreclosures. We had loose lending standards. But nevertheless, you guys, we have a surge of inventory. We have a foreclosure bubble um, forming. But here's the thing. I don't necessarily think that this time around, the crash is going to predominantly come from consumers. I think that this time around, we're going to crash, okay, because of investors liquidating and new builders. I think that they're going to flood the market with too much inventory. And as a result of too much inventory, the price cutting is actually going to start, and it already has, from new home builders and from investors. Case in point, new homes prices are down right now 9.5% on average. So I think the crash again is coming from investors, is coming from builders, unlike 2008, which you could argue came from consumers, although I will also argue it also came from deregulation of lending standards. But other than that, you guys, I definitely appreciate you watching this video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.